Hi chemists, we are now going to focus on air, our third type of chemical reaction called a single replacement. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify a single replacement reaction and predict the products and words for a single replacement reaction. A single replacement reaction can be recognized because you are going to have an element and a compound reacting together to give you a brand new element and a brand new compound. The thing about these reactions, though, is that they actually do not always occur. So we're going to have to use a new reference sheet called the reactivity series or activity series sheet. Another helpful rule of thumb is that like will replace like, which means that metals only have the capacity to replace other metals and nonmetals can only replace other nonmetals. Here are some examples. If you have a metal and a compound that is replaced by a more active metal. So if you had, for example, lithium plus zinc acetate and you had to predict the products, you have to first identify, well, what's replacing what here? Well, lithium is a metal. It only has the capacity to replace the other metal. That's why I kept saying like replaces like. So since zinc is the other metal, I'm going to have to check to see, can this reaction occur? And the way I will do that is by using the activity series. So the activity series looks something like this where we have, uh, it's in order of decreasing activity. So that means the thing that's at the top is the most reactive and then every, so basically lithium has the ability to replace everything below it. And since lithium is all the way at the top and zinc is right here in the middle, this reaction can occur because lithium is more reactive than zinc. So therefore, what you will get is zinc plus lithium acetate. Because lithium is more reactive than zinc, this reaction would occur. Here, here's another example, copper plus aluminum sulfate. Again, copper is the metal, aluminum's the metal. So we have to check to see, can copper replace aluminum? That's my question mark. So if you notice, copper is the thing that is by itself. That has to be the thing that is more reactive than the thing it is replacing. Well, guess what? In this case, since copper is below aluminum, it is not more reactive. It is, does not have the ability to replace the aluminum. So therefore, this reaction will not occur. So you could typically just write no reaction. Again, since copper is lower on the activity series and is therefore less reactive than aluminum. So this reaction will not happen. Let's look at this one, lead to carbonate and barium. So we've got our metals. We're going to check to see if they can replace each other. So you can see that barium is the thing that's by itself. That has to be more reactive than the thing that's in the compound it's replacing. This is, in fact, going to happen because barium is more reactive. And so you would get barium carbonate plus lead. Notice, though, that I don't need a Roman numeral for the lead, and the reason why is because lead is now an element. You only need the Roman numeral if it's in a compound. Another example is you had hydrogen in water is replaced by a more active metal. So, for example, if you were to have sodium and water, you may say, well, I know water is a compound, but I don't know what's, how we're going to figure out what's replacing what. So I recommend changing water into its special name called hydrogen hydroxide. Then when you do that, it's a lot more clear as far as what is going to replace what. So in this case, we have, um, oh, I just told you again, <laughs> but yes, you wanna change water into hydrogen hydroxide. And then we can check to see, is the sodium more reactive than hydrogen? Because notice this is the reactivity series of metals and hydrogen. So since sodium is more reactive than hydrogen, this reaction will occur. And so you will get sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen. Let's look at acids. So if you have hydrogen acid is replaced by a more active metal. So for example, calcium plus phosphoric acid. Again, it's not so obvious what's gonna replace what here because you've got this thing called phosphoric acid. It's not gonna be, for example, calcium acid plus phosphoric, right? That doesn't make any sense. So this is one case again where you would change it to the ionic name. So phosphoric, if you remember ic, must have been eight. 
So what we're really looking at is since it's an acid is hydrogen phosphate. Then we can see if in fact this will replace. And so that's why my helpful tip is always change acid names into their ionic name. So calcium is more reactive than hydrogen. So this reaction will occur and you'll get calcium phosphate plus hydrogen. A final scenario is where you have nonmetals. So while you have the reactivity series of metals, you also have the reactivity series of nonmetals. And that's why I kept saying like replaces like. So if you notice, you've got fluorine plus magnesium iodide. Fluorine is a nonmetal. That means that it only can replace the other nonmetal in the compound. So we're not replacing magnesium here. We're actually replacing the iodide. And to show whether or not this happens, oops, sorry about that, you can see that fluorine is more reactive than iodine. And so that since fluorine is more reactive than iodine, this reaction will occur, and you'll get magnesium fluoride plus iodine. And I did underline in yellow um, the different endings, so you do want to be careful and make sure that when you have the fluorine combining with the magnesium that you change it to the ionic name, and then the iodine you have to switch back to the original name. So watch your endings with these. Make sure the nonmetals replace the other nonmetals. So that is it for our discussion of single replacement reactions. Make sure you have your reactivity series handy. That way it makes it easier to predict whether or not these reactions occur.